Just a quick shout out before we get started to Mr. Clinton Anderson, who left us a wonderful five-star review across at Google My Business. Clinton says, love the podcast and the Facebook group. So much useful information and easy to digest. A must for anyone in the trades and contracting industry. Thank you very much. Clinton, much appreciated. Folks, if you would take five minutes to leave us a review, we would very much appreciate it. And of course, we will read it out um, as they come through. So you can head across to iTunes or Google or Facebook and leave reviews there. Um, We would certainly appreciate that. It does help us with our rankings too, especially if it's in iTunes. So uh, we'd very much appreciate it. Thanks, folks. We talk a lot on the Sideshed podcast about productivity, how to stay focused, how to be the most productive throughout your day, little techniques, tools, trainings, I suppose, apps and programs, frameworks, all that kind of stuff that you can use. But we haven't yet really spoken about what you can do to prepare yourself mentally for a productive day or just a productive, calm life in general. Now, I know that a lot of you guys will probably hear the word meditation and you'd automatically think of some monk sitting at the top of a Himalayan mountain wrapped in a orange robe chanting, but that's not exactly what meditation is. In fact, it's far from the truth. Um, Today, we're talking about the reality of how to apply certain techniques and certain focuses from a mental perspective that can enable you to equip yourself better for the day coming, the years coming, and then of course, things that arise throughout the day, which sometimes we take in a little bit of a reactive manner. Now, yes, we coin this meditation. However, it's not so much what you would expect from meditation. Today, I'm speaking with a gentleman who helps break down practically how meditation would look for a modern trade business owner, how he uses it as a tradesperson, and how you guys can go away and start taking little things that you can apply to your day to help you be more productive, help you be more relaxed, and help you be less reactive while you're out there on the job. Guys, I encourage you to really listen to this because I know it's a journey that I went through uh, years ago. And to be honest with you, if you go and have a look at any successful business owners or elite athletes and things like that, in one way or another, they will have some form of meditation or mental focus or whatever they want to call it applied to their days to help them perform optimally. So a lot of the books we read today, a lot of them have things in there which without saying the word meditation, they are kind of meditative and they do have certain elements that, you know, to somebody who understands meditation, they'd say, well, yeah, what they're actually practicing there is a meditation technique. So I encourage you guys to get out there and listen to what uh, Luke says in this podcast and then try and just apply a few of those things to your life. Give it a month and see what happens and see if you can track some progress you know just see see how it would apply we drop some hints in there guys on some programs and things that might be able to help you but for the better part it's quite a simple process and some of the techniques that he talks about you could literally go and apply as as soon as you get off this listening to this podcast and i'm sure you will see benefits for it it is a 5000 year old methodology and of late there's been a lot of science that has been released to help strengthen this but to be honest with you anything that's been around for 5,000 years has got to have some legs so um, (laughs) I think uh, at worst case scenario uh, go and give it a bit of a try and then um, report back in the community and let me know how you've been tracking with this because I'm super interested or if you've got experience with mental focus techniques and meditation and that kind of stuff uh, let me know what your thoughts are and your experiences and techniques you use to make, get the most out of it. So enjoy this show, guys. Um, if you've got any comments, you know where to get us. Uh, head across to the Facebook community and leave them there. Please like and review this on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, wherever you listen to your podcast. And uh, go and share this episode with somebody who you think will benefit from it. That's all from me. Let's jump right in. It is with an insane amount of joy that I come to you today saying that this podcast is proudly brought to you by the Sightsheds Surf and Learn program. That's right, this year we are running our second Surf and Learn program over in the Maldives off the back of the hugely successful Surf and Learn 2018 program that we ran. 
It was so much fun. I cannot even begin to explain how cool these events are. Uh, we basically take a group of enthusiasts, if you will, across to the Maldives. We live on a luxury yacht, motor yacht, for 10 days, and we basically live the high life. We surf, we eat like kings, we drink if that's your thing, you can fish, you can do whatever you want, you can go scuba diving, all that crazy stuff. Um, and in the evenings, we do a business workshop, so it is a tax deductible trip and it is just the most amazing experience ever. Last year was mind-bogglingly good. Anyway, obviously we're taking a boat and boats have limited seats. So if you wanna to come to this event, you need to head across to the siteshed.com forward slash events, click on the Surf and Learn 2019 link and go to the landing page there where you can secure your spot or you can find out more information about the event. These tickets will go quickly. I, there's a huge percentage of the guys that came last year want to come again, and for reasons which you will see on the landing page, it is absolutely fantastic. The direct landing page is the siteshed.com forward slash surf 2019, if you want to go straight there. It is just amazing, guys. I really hope to see you there. The content's brilliant, the networking's fantastic, the location and the experience is like nothing you will ever experience. I can tell you, it is just brilliant. Anyway, that's all from me. I hope you hope to see you there and um, enjoy the podcast. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Uh, Luke Shipley, welcome to the Site Shed Podcast. Hey, Matt, how are you going? Very well. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, buddy. All the way from Melbourne. Yeah, beautiful, sunny today. It's going to be a stinker, but yeah. 4,000 degrees, no doubt. Yeah, been hot for the last couple of weeks, so it might have <laughs> a bit of respite. Uh, Luke, we're on the show today to talk uh, about focus and about meditation. Now, it's a topic that we haven't really covered in on the site shed before. Well, not in detail anyway. I mean, I've, a lot of people in the group have had experiences with uh, meditation. And when, when you reached out to me the other week, I, um, I threw a poll out in the, in the group to talk a bit about um, who'd be interested to having a, a live meditation run in the group. And to my surprise, um, mm. the majority works. So yeah, right, yeah. Um, mm. I know it's one of those things where like people that aren't necessarily familiar with meditation per se, they sort of automatically um, sort of think it's going to be like some sort of hippie thing where you start chanting and uh, mm. sit around in a circle and hold hands. But um, I know... And I know that was kind of my experience as well, to be fair. And then one of my um, one of my buddies who actually uh, lives in Bali, he works on a um, a meditation retreat up up in <coughs> north of Ubud, and um, he said, "Oh, you you really should start meditating because I'm like quite a highly wound person, don't sort of have an off button." Mm. And um, he said, "You really mm -hmm. need to start meditating." I thought, "Oh, what the hell?" So we, my wife and I, flew over to um, over to Bali to this meditation retreat, and um, it was the weirdest thing I'd ever done. And uh, um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a silent retreat. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It was full, no full vegetarian. There was no yeah. meat, and I must admit that was like a bit of a turning point for me with my meat consumption. I just absolutely loved the food. I just couldn't get enough yeah. of it. I, if I could, I, if I could cook like that, I'd never eat meat again. To be honest with you, mm. but um, anyway, so we sort of went on a few different journeys there with different styles of meditation. We went on some really trippy stuff, which kind of freaked me out and deterred me a little bit, like walking labyrinths and all this carry on, mm. and um, which I voiced as well. And I said, you know, this is a bit too far fetched for me. And then they kind of back, he came back and he said, well, there's different types of meditation, and um, and he goes, certain types suit, suit certain people different ways. And that's what really interested me. Then I started doing a bit of research into it. I started realizing that, you know, a lot of the stuff that we stereotypically think of in terms of meditation is complete horseshit. And like a lot of the stuff is, it, it, it is a little bit rainbows and unicorns, whereas other stuff yeah. is far more practical. Yeah. I know that your background, which you're going to tell us a little bit about shortly, is far more from that practical application of meditation. I know you've been through a bit of a journey yourself. So I'm looking forward, I suppose, to... First of all, hearing about your transition as a tradie and have, you know, the journey that you went through with, on that meditation path. And then I'd like to hear a little bit, obviously, about how you know, the advantages in terms of focus and how it can benefit you from a business perspective. Because, I mean, people that are listening to this podcast, 
are typically interested in anything that can improve productivity and anything that can mm. focus. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. And um, yeah. and although although they, they may not like to admit it, um, meditation can help with that. So the other thing I suppose I'd like to talk about is a bit of like practically how it can look for people that are busy working, you know, on a building site or, you know, their tradies are out there swinging hammers, um, you know, yeah. I look for them. So um, we might just even start with a bit of background on yourself and a bit about, you know, your profession and maybe a bit about your journey and how you ended up sort of where you are today. Yeah, no worries. I will, first of all, just say, again, going back to what, what you said there with the retreat, I mean, I think a lot of what happens with people's introduction to meditation is, it, is that it's that full on, full deep, full historical side of things and tends to put a lot of people off. So that's sort of where I come from to try and make it practical and simplified. So, and I guess in my own case, <clears throat> it was a similar sort of thing. I just had that impression in my head that, um, yeah, it was for hippies. It was, um, you know, something people did in communes and it was just, I just couldn't grasp the concept of sitting and, and being still and just, you know, being present in your own thoughts. So sort of uh, I, I sort of came to it through a situation where I was diagnosed with depression in 2010. So up until that point, I'd been, I'd been a chippy since I was 18. So I'd, I'd come to that point in my life of working long hours, a couple of young kids and working long hours at work and then coming home and doing Pretty much what you do as a chippy or a trader, you come home, you work on your own house, you're trying to build, trying to get ahead. So you're, you know, you're working on your own house to try and uh, you know, build the bank balance, so to speak, and then make make the next jump, move on to the next project, and away you go. So there was a stage there where uh, I'd finished the house, we bought a new place, and it basically just sent me spiraling down. Really, so it was just too much, too much work. I was overworked, overstressed didn't have the mindset to, to take on the projects that I was taking on and then yeah, just ended up with depression. So uh, that, that was a bit of a journey to try and come out of that. So that was sort of five years of really hard work to just try and change my mindset to get me into a place where I felt like myself again and where I could do the things I wanted to do. So you know, in a similar situation, I like to be busy, I like to have a project, I like to have something on the go, I like to be moving forward. With the depression, that sort of dropped me back to a situation where I just couldn't do the things that I used to do. So I felt like I was sort of treading water for five years. And I'd had a little bit of an introduction. I, I'd seen a, psycho a psychologist in this time, had a bit of therapy, and they, they suggested old meditation. But it was just a suggestion. There was no more information about it. So I went home one day, tried it for 10 minutes. I must admit I felt a bit better. But I had no idea what I was doing. I had no references, no guidelines what to do. So it just happened once. And never happened again. But it wasn't until sort of probably yeah, five years later, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I've changed careers. I'm now working as a uh, rigger, crane operator sort of thing. And just wasn't, wasn't really getting anywhere. Wasn't feeling like I was um, achieving anything. Had a few back problems that I'd seen a physio for over the years. They'd given me some yoga stretches and whatnot to do. So, and there's a situation at home in my life where just wife and I went, we weren't getting on and it wasn't actually looking good. So it sort of came to a crunch point where I had to do something. So I'd seen a, a video done by Brett Kirk, AFL footballer, for a, a meditation app. And you know, just one day I just decided, right, that's it. I've got to fix me back and I've got to fix the situation I'm in. So then I just decided one morning I'm just going to do it and going to commit to it. So it yeah, basically just started the yoga and the meditation at the same time and really haven't looked back since. So. Mm. It's just allowed me to become the person I actually want to be or the person I was. So, like, I'm 40 now and I feel fitter like, and more switched on than I did when I was in my early 20s. Like, I know where I want to go. The focus is there. The energy is there. You know, it's just turned that ability. Those five years in, in between was very hard to make any changes, but in the three, three and a half years since, it's just been change after change after change. Just, just, it's just rolled on. So, yeah, that's, that's so, sort of how it's affected me and that's how I came to it. It's one of the things I actually wanted to talk about. You're probably going to get into it. The, so I, I went to this yoga retreat and I, I struggled with the sit down and meditate style. I just mm. I couldn't switch off and 
I tried it for a long time. I, I, I got like apps and stuff on my phone that would help me with it, like your yeah, headspace and all these kind of things. And I'd sit down at the beach in the morning and I'd try it. But I, I, I still just, I just kept, I was, my, my thoughts were so transient. I just kept thinking I was like drifting into, I'd just think about work or I'd think about something else and whatever. And I yep. just, it was such a battle for me to keep it on focus. And I was yep. telling my buddy this and he said, well, you should try, um, you should try yoga. He said, because mm. yoga is basically meditation with movement. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And so I started doing some yoga and I absolutely loved it. And I mm. spent years doing yoga. I, I thought it was amazing. And I, I, I don't do yoga anymore. I, I, I sort of moved from there into sort of gymnastic strength training, which is still what I'm doing. That kind of, uh, I, saw, I stopped doing yoga, but I think the, the mind set of it, kept, mm. I, I, I took that across that new training. So if I don't have any shit day at work, I can go yep. into the gym and it does clear my head. And I walk mm. out of there and I feel sort of revived. Now, I don't know, that's probably as a result of, um, I suppose, what I learned through the yoga practice and the meditation elements that are, that are tied into it. But I also learned while I was doing yoga that yoga is actually designed as a way to prepare you for meditation. Mm. And I thought that was really interesting. So a lot of people, um, I don't think, realize that. Like the, all of the, the movements and stuff that you're doing with yoga is designed to sort of prepare your body for, for that meditation process which normally comes well traditionally i should say uh, comes after so i found that quite interesting because I, I didn't realize that but i mean can you relate to that but like, did you ever have that that sort of i just can't switch off like sitting down at the beach there like a fly buzz past me and i'll be like oh, get away from me and i just couldn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh no uh, mate i i completely i can understand it and it still happens to me i think you've just gone off on there i don't know um yeah. but um yeah it does happen to me, uh, and it did happen at the start too. So, mate, the first sort of few times I did it, I just found like, I just couldn't believe that the, the the noise that was going on in my head first thing in the morning. It was just it was def it was deafening, you know, to sit in a in a room, silent room. I didn't realise how noisy it was, you know. So that was a hard thing to get over. But uh, after a week or two, it just my thoughts just became quiet. I just sort of gained the control over that, and I can understand where you're coming from with where you say like you, you'd just be thinking about work, you think, think the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And essentially that basically is what meditation is. Like you're going to sit and try and think about nothing, but you will think about something. A thought is always going to pop into your head. And so really that's the only thing you've ever got to learn about meditation is that is to learn and understand that your brain will think and all you've got to do is step back and watch what you're thinking about. And then at that stage, once you're sick of thinking about that, you just go back to your breath and uh, let that thought go. Another one's going to come back in. Yeah. And then you'll think about that for a bit. Then you'll go return to your breath. You'll stop thinking about it. And that's what that's what um, that's how you increase like that and fine tune your focus is by letting that you know by having control over the thought and focusing back on your breath and letting that next thought come into your head and I think that's where there needs to be a bit of a, <clears throat> a bridging of the like sort of education there that people think oh I'll keep thinking about things I can't switch off well that's not the idea the idea is not to switch off the idea is to be able to not get carried away with a particular thought so you might be sitting there thinking about work but then at least you can catch yourself out and say oh I'm thinking about work I don't want to think about that just return to the breath for a bit you might only get a three, four-second break where you're just focusing on your breath before you switch on to the next thought, that's no dramas because yeah. once you're on that next thought, you realise you've got that next thought, then you go return back to your breath again and just keep repeating the cycle and sort of becomes like gym for the mind where you know, you're just constantly flexing that muscle. So the more you flex it, the more control you've got, the more, you know, the more strength you've got. And it's the strength of the mind is what you end up working on. And so then you just carry that over into every other part of your life. So you know, conversations with, yep. with bosses or conversations with workers or conversations with clients, you've just got that, um, you can exercise that, that strength. So, yeah, that's why I'm trying to simplify it where there's no particular right way to do it. Right. The act of doing it is the, act, is the actual right way to do it. The fact that you just, you're, you're making the attempt to do it is um, more than enough and the rest will come over time. I found I got to a point where I was, and, and I, I must admit, like I, 
I try, I did like, I think with the program, like these apps and stuff, you get like a, a 30 day trial or something in the program. But I, I quite enjoyed, I quite enjoyed doing it. I just felt though, like, I, I don't know if this is just me, but I just felt like I'm, I'm, I'm not being productive. And mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. But mm-hmm. I, I imagine there's a lot of people out there that sort of have that. They sort of think, okay, I'll try this meditation thing. And they sit down, they, I basically sat there for 10 minutes in the morning. Um, and it's, I wasn't productive where I could have been, you know, reconciling my zero or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, I, but, I, but I must admit, like, I, I, don't, I, I read quite a lot of books and uh, I was reading one with, you know, um, what was the name of it? It was called, um, uh, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, uh, Total Recall was called, the book, and it was about okay. life, basically. And he said yeah. one of the turning points in his life was when he learned, when he, actively practiced meditation while he was competing mm-hmm. because he was running businesses and he was competing on the you know national global scale and you know, he was world champion all this kind of stuff and he said there were so many things going on that he was just trying to do too many things and he said the meditation really helped him focus and he said even to today although he doesn't actually practice meditation per se he's what he learned from that he applies every minute of every day basically with, with his focus and his attention to detail mm-hmm. and I found that really interesting. You know, someone can come from sort of that background. I mean, if you looked at Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Austrian, massive bodybuilder, you know, super successful Hollywood star, you know, former governor of California, this kind of thing, you think, yeah, right, meditation would be the last thing that he'd ever condone. <laughs> actually, yeah. the first thing he condones. So, yeah. I mean, that kind of hits home, I think. And, I mean, look, I feel like over the last 15 years, you know, the stigma with meditation is kind of dissipating a little bit. Like, people are kind mm. of opening their eyes a little bit to it. And especially with the growing popularity of things like Pilates and yoga and you know, a lot of people are seeing advantages and benefits of that. So I feel like meditation is kind of uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a positive curve. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I still think that a lot of people struggle with the practicality of it. And I suppose that's one thing that I'd like to talk to you about is how you can, how you can fit it into a busy life and how you can, how you, can you know, as, as a tradesperson or a contractor, you know, how you can actually take the time fit it into your schedule or I'd say take the time, make the time. I mean, let's be honest, mm. <coughs> everyone's got the same time in a day. So yeah. you just got to get it done. So how does it look, I suppose, typically when you're um, getting started with this practice? Um, and I know guys, a lot of you out there are already doing this. You've already commented in the group and I've had a few of you DM me as well, but after that Facebook post saying how, how much it's changed, you know, your lives. So thank you very much for those comments. But, you know, I, I suppose for a lot of the guys out there, Luke, that are sort of, considering it or wanting a place to start, what does that look like? We interrupt this podcast today to talk to you very quickly about Tradie Web Guys content creation program. That program has been designed specifically for trade-based organizations as a way that you guys as trade business owners can start creating content that enables you to engage better with your customers and your potential customers. It will enable you to build trust and build rapport because what you're doing is you're investing in educating them. Biggest problem that we see with our customers today is that they're not regularly updating their websites. And that's a problem because first of all, the search engines are looking for that. And second of all, potential customers are also looking for it. Trading Web Guys content creation program has been specifically designed to help you get regular relevant content on your website consistently every month. We know that it's hard when you're out there on the tools and we know that sometimes you don't always have the time to be able to do these things yourself. So we're taking it off your hands for you. It's a service that we're offering for you guys. We want to make sure that you're getting this done because we know how important it is. Anyway, head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash content, fill in the form and one of our representatives will come back to you. For a lot of the guys out there, Luke, that are sort of considering it or wanting a place to start what does that look like well it can be anything really but i mean personally i my practice is every morning so i just use it as a day uh sorry a way to re, uh, set myself for the entire day so i just use that time so uh say the 10 15 minutes in the morning after i do my yoga to set myself up so i'm ahead of the ball i'm ahead of the curve i'm ahead of the day so my mind is clear. I'm focused on exactly what I'm doing today, where I'm going, who I'm going to deal with. Okay. And I, so, therefore, I don't become reactive to anything, you know. I've, I'm calm, focused, and I'm clear. So, 
that's how I do mine. I, mine is basically in the morning. So throughout the day, things arise. So especially or someone in your situation or tradies, that sort of thing. So if they're running a business, you know, there's always, you know, you'll have phone calls from workers, clients, that sort of thing. So, you know, if, if you start to get a bit overwhelmed during the day, you can sort of stop, sit yourself in the car, two or three minutes, run through some simple breathing exercises and just clear your head. I mean, there's some really good research out there now, like scientific research. There was one study done in, um, by Japanese, I think it was Japanese scientists, say that six deep breaths through your nose is like a complete reset from one situation to the next. Really? So, I mean, how long does it take to do that? It takes a minute. Yeah. You know, and that's something I use regularly. Like, I'll do that before, say, I'll get to work. I've driven to work, say, traffic might have been shit. Before I actually get out of the car, just take, just take a minute. It's one minute. And then, bang, I'm switched on. I'm clear about what I'm doing next. And it's, you know, it's rolling to that next situation. Once that next situation ends, just say, it might be leaving to drive home, just do the same thing. Six deep breaths. So I use that one a lot. And it, it, it works brilliantly. So, and then same thing, come home, got to switch off. I'm now going back to speak with the wife, the kids. It's a completely different situation. Take a minute, clear your head, yeah. bang, and away you go. So it, it helps you. And it's, I guess, where it would help your listeners and your crew is that it helps you compartmentalize each section of your day. So you can just, like, I start the day with a, with a 15 minute session sort of thing. And then throughout the day, each new situation as that arises, take a minute and then go on to the next one, take one minute. So out of the whole day, might spend, say, 15 minutes in the morning, but three or four times throughout the day, I might spend a minute here and there. And okay. it's as simple as that. You know, and there's, there's, I don't know, you know there's uh, probably 10, 15 breathing techniques you can use that are about one minute to two minutes long hmm. you can use to reset through the day. And they're all... Meditation techniques, some of the new, some of the new uh, based on science, but it, the bulk of them have you know, been around for, say, 5,000 years. Right. That, you, that you, you do through your meditation practice, your sitting practice, but you can just take small chunks of them and break them up and use them at your own, uh, use, yeah, use them when you want throughout the day. You don't actually have to then go, you've got to go and sit and calm, quiet space and you know, create this atmosphere. You can just create your own atmosphere within a minute and then move on. Yeah, I think that's such a such a um, amazing paradigm that, like, I mean, we could all easily do that, and the reality mm. is most of us don't because we're so like on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Yep. And that resetting is brilliant. And I, I, I mean, last year I've, I've I've gone through a massive like productivity shift, and I've just put a lot of focus into being as productive as possible, mm-hmm. and I've implemented um, like Pomodoro technique. I don't know if you're familiar with that, like the time blocking. So you basically work oh, okay. Out work for half an hour, take a five-minute break, work for half an hour. And it's, it's, just, it's, it's not the same thing, don't get me wrong, but it does kind of work on that principle where you, you know, to, to focus, on, focus on one thing, take time out, reset on the next, so focus yeah. on one, get it done. And, then, you know, and so I, I do kind of resonate to what you're saying there with, okay, when you're ready to move on to the next thing, take a minute, shift gear, and then go on to the, on to the next thing. And I, I think as well for a lot of listeners out there, that whole, you know, yeah, sure, like that, this practice that we're talking about, I mean, it's, you know, coined meditation, I guess, but uh, the reality is, like you say, it's, it's, it's breathing, it's, it's staying focused, it's keeping focused, it's applying your attention to something specific, and it's really about getting results. So right. uh, people can make that shift between, oh, I'm meditating to actually I'm just getting reset and focusing so I can be more productive, and I think a lot more people would probably do it. <laughs> Yeah, oh, absolutely, and and that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. It just needs to be, it needs to be broadened. I'd love to come up with another name for it, but um, that's something I'm working on. I'll, if I can come up with another name, coin another name, or you know, could be a millionaire. But uh, we'll see how we go with that. <laughs> but yeah, because it's just got that stigma. And at the end of the day, like it's something that's that's been around for five thousand years, so it's right. very hard to detach from the history of it. You know, um, but with the, the more scientific research that's coming in. And it's been done over the last sort of twenty to thirty years. You know, they, they can actually quantify the results as to what what it does to you. You know, and, and give reason as to like what people might have said in the past. Oh, I feel this. Oh, I feel that. Yeah, there's a reason for that. You know, and science can sort of look at that and say, well, here's what's actually happening. You know what I mean? I think as well. Like, I mean, anything that's been around for five thousand years has probably got legs. Fair to say. Yeah, um, fair enough. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think sometimes we get so so caught up in 
um, you know, we, we, we can be very dismissive with certain things, you know, based on a lot of science. But at the end of the day, science doesn't always have an answer for, you know, for certain things. And I think mm. even you talk back, you know, talk about, you know, you know, Chinese medicine and all this kind of stuff, you know, there's a lot of things there that science doesn't necessarily yet have backing for, but we know works. Yeah, yep. And I feel like this is certainly one of those things. And to be honest, I mean, like, as I say, I, I read quite a lot of books. A lot of, I read a lot of business books. There's very few business books that I read where the author, in some way or another, either doesn't, either directly recommends meditation or without even knowing it, is recommending some kind of meditation, which is yeah. you know, not meditation, but it kind of is meditation. <laughs> it might be yeah. like setting your daily focus or it might be something like that. Um, but effectively, without even knowing it, he's probably talking about that. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you've read. I mean, there's that classic "Think Rich, Grow Rich." I don't know if you've read that. You probably would have read that. Grow rich. Yeah. Yeah. Have you read that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, reading that, there's some. There's there's this. Uh, I, the funny thing is, I actually read that at the same time. Like, I like to read two books at once. So I was reading that at the same time. I was reading a book on meditation, like traditional meditation. I was reading that book. And you would, you would not believe how similar the two books were. There's, you know, I mean, he talks about in that uh, Think Rich, Grow Rich about the energy um, and, you know, intention and that sort of thing. And it's just, uh, it was very similar to what I was reading in, in, in a, you know, in this book about traditional meditation. So I know I'm probably getting a bit out there for most people at the moment, but well, it really comes down to energy and focus, you know, and that's, that's sort of how everything in the world operates, I suppose. Yeah, and, I, and that's kind of funny you say that. I mean, Think and Grow Rich, I mean, that, that book from Napoleon Hill, I mean, that, that was written, I think, back in the 30s or something. Like, it's not a, that's right. it's not a new book. And mm. I imagine back then a lot of the information, well, I know for certain, a lot of the information that we have around meditation, I mean, we think that we're subjective to new things now. I mean, God, can you imagine back in the 1930s? Oh. I mean, if he had been talking about meditation, that book would have been dismissed and we probably never would have heard of it. But the fact that he's yep. got a different spin on it, probably rings home pretty true. And I think that book, even to this day, is one of, it's still one of the best sellers. It's an amazing book. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's an interesting point. Um, and, and even when you look at, and I know you touched on it before, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of these elite sportsmen today, you know, obviously they train very hard and they work on their body, but so many of them also have that mindset and mind training practice that mm. they put into play because they find that it does fuel their bodies. And it's true. Like we've spent so much time building building the physical body, but then, you know, we may not spend enough time focusing on the mental body. So I think that was, a, that was something that I picked up on. I think it was in, in the Tim Ferriss podcast or something like that. And he's massive on meditation. He does it daily. Yeah. And um, so does, you know, the likes of Joe Rogan and all these really successful, you know, names that we'd be so familiar with. But then you look at them as people and you think, oh, probably not. Or maybe Tim Ferriss, you probably think yes. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think it is interesting to look at the types of people that do it, you know, your Joe Rogans and your Arnold Schwarzeneggers and all these guys and sort of think, oh, okay, well, if they're doing it, then maybe there is something in that. Um, mm. It's about finding, I suppose, the method that, that might suit you best. I don't know. Yep. I know. For me, it was a bit like that. Like I needed to, once I started doing yoga, I was like, oh, okay, I'm starting to... I'm starting to be, like, respond better to this. Mm. And as a result now, like, I mean, I don't know. I, I, by, by no means am I like a meditation guru, but I feel like I can kind of, I feel like I can kind of, I'm not, not reactive anymore, like with business, yeah. like things happen in business and I'm like, okay, let's address it, you know, or it's, it's not so, whereas before I'd be like, God, God, fuck, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, even well, the bathroom played. Yeah, even to the point now where you're like, you know, you might write an email and I might not send it for a day and then come back and look at the email in the morning before I send it and go, oh, okay, well, let's change all this because I'm being a freak. You know? But yeah, I, th I think that's quite some, there's a lot of little things there you can take away from that whole, that whole area of observation, which is kind of what I go, what I go into now with, with the actual, um, with meditation. I know my friend Simon was teaching me about this and he was saying it's, it's a way that you can really observe yourself kind of from, from outside of your body and like look in and see what's happening. And yep. I sort of took that on board. I actually found that quite helpful when I was trying to meditate because until I, until I had that, and he would say to me, I don't know what your experience is here, but I, I was struggling with the whole, okay, sit there, Wait, like when thoughts come into your mind, acknowledge them and then dismiss them. And I was struggling with that. But then he sort of helped me with, 
okay, we'll just sit there and like view yourself from an outside from like you're looking at yourself from within a room, you're sitting there and sort of be like a third, like a third party within the room watching what's happening with yeah. it and sort of and treat it like that. And I was like, oh, that actually, I found that really helpful. Like I could kind of, I could re- resonate to that with that and I can relate to that a bit better. And I'm sure yeah. there's little, lots of little techniques like this, which I'm sure you'd be, you'd be all over. But um, I, I found that until I sort of had that guidance there, I really couldn't get into sync with it. Yeah. I don't I think, know. Yeah, well, I think it, exactly what you're explaining there, I, from, from my point of view, is what meditation is all about. Right. Um, that is the, the key and the number one thing to understand is to be, under, to be aware that you, your thoughts in your head don't, aren't necessarily you, if you know what I mean. So the things that you think, just because you think them, it doesn't mean that they're either A, going to happen or B, that that's who you are. So if you can have that ability to step back and look at your thoughts, which I believe is what meditation is all about. It's just being able to observe your own thoughts and separate yourself from that. And then while you're doing that, you know, if you're using breathing techniques, that sort of thing, just allowing you to continue to step away, that's what gives you the control over your own thoughts. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, I completely understand what you, what, how it's been explained to you and, and that sort of thing. And that's, that's essentially how it works is having that ability to just step away and just look at your thoughts and whatever the situation is, then that's the only thing you need to understand, that you are not your thoughts, if you know what I mean. I'm probably getting a bit out there for most people now, but, um, yeah, just because you well, have that thought doesn't mean that is actually you. You know what I mean? Well, if you want to think something different, then you can. I completely relate to that. And I know when I, when I, used, to, um, when I used to have a job, shudder, and I used, to, <laughs> I used to commute to the office every morning, and like that, the time that I would leave home, the time that I would get to work, I would just literally sit there and fabricate conversations yeah. and arguments that would be happening mm-hmm. at work, which n- never happened. They never, they never, they never did turn out well. I shouldn't say that. I feel like sometimes you know, when you think about things enough, you get there and you sort of make them happen. And manifest it, was all, it yeah. yeah, you manifest it exactly. And it was, but I'd be like sitting in the car and I'd get to work and I'd be just so angry and pissed off. And I just couldn't understand why every time I got in the car and drove to work, I would just be fuming. Like I just, I, it, was, it was the weirdest thing. And I was literally, this is well before I ever, you know, basically tried any meditation or anything like that. I was just, I just couldn't believe it. It was such a strange scenario. I'd never been in that situation before. You yep. get, you'd just be in an argumentative, defensive state and it was so unproductive. Whereas now I feel like, I mean, luckily, I don't have to commute, so I probably don't have that stress of traffic and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like if people can get themselves in the right mindset and they can, even, even through listening to podcasts or just listening to things that can, you know, positive things that can help you, you know, in, in that downtime per se, I feel like that's such an empowering mindset you're getting yourself into, um, setting yourself up for, you know, a, a good day ahead. Yeah. Well, that's where the... That's, I mean, I've been in exactly the same situation. It's been hours I, I, arguing with myself on the way to work. I mean, we're probably all, most of all blokes have had to relate to that for sure. And that's where, you know, essentially that's what the meditation does. It just allows you to quiet those thoughts down and you give yourself the, the strength and the ability to think about what you want to think about rather yeah. than having, rather than being carried away with them. And that's, that's where you know, those breathing techniques is to cut that thought out. Allow yourself to move on the next one. You're sick of thinking about that. You give, you, that's where you gain the control. That's where you gain the strength. You know, you, you actually gain the strength over your own thoughts. You know, and you've got the ability to think about what you want to think, or if you want to tune out, just tune out. I was going to say, uh, what, what about like if we spoke a little bit about how how it works, and for the guys out there that want to give it a bit of a try, like maybe some practical how tos to get started with it. I mean, I'm conscious I don't want to take up too much of your time, but this, hey, got- it's quite interesting and. I, I think, like for a lot of people out there, like I was, and to be honest, like I probably still am. I'd be interested in sort of saying, okay, well, what's a bit of a starting point with this, and then maybe we can even talk about some of those, like some of those apps and the advantages or the pros and cons of using, you know, some of those guided uh, meditation apps to help you sort of get into that the zone. Mm. Well, straight off the bat, there's one one thing I, we haven't touched on, but I just want to get into it, and that's it's probably getting back to the neuroscience of it, and it's just what it actually does to your brain once you start meditating and you continue to meditate. So it'll, it'll, it, it shrinks the part of the brain that's responsible for that fight or flight response. 
So like you said before, how you're less reactive to things. If something comes up, the, the part of the brain that's responsible for that is the amygdala, and that's responsible for that fight or flight. So that, that'll make you react to something. So in the course of doing it, it shrinks that part of the brain. <laughs> but at the same time, it grows the part of the brain that is responsible for learning and memory. So it's sort of a, a double hit where you're, you're becoming less reactive, but you're learning, your, your ability to learn becomes quicker and your ability to retain, retain new information, it becomes greater. So yeah, that's one of the, the, the scientific things that's come out over the last 20 years that you can see the benefits of it. So when you're looking at sort of integrating it into your daily routine, um, it can be as simple as, I mean, I always recommend the morning because it sets you up for the day. It can yeah. be as simple as three or four minutes. Like it's not hard to get out of bed three or four minutes earlier, you know. We sort of look at, I mean, if you look at your morning routine, you'll spend five to ten minutes getting a coffee, you know what I mean? I'll yeah. do that. I'll go out of my way just to get a coffee right. you know, because of the benefits of it. Like it's going to give me more energy. I'm going to be clearer. I'm going to be more focused. I'm ready to take on the day. You can spend three or four minutes just to start with getting out of bed earlier just before you do your coffee, you know, your, your normal coffee routine. And that's just to take, I always recommend just to start with those six deep breaths through your nose. And then you can move on to say um, like a, uh, another, another breathing technique is what they sort of come on referred to as like a box breathing technique. So that's um, you're just breathing in for five breaths then you're holding onto your breath for five breaths, uh, five, uh, five counts, sorry. And then you're breathing out for five counts. And then you're holding your breath for five counts and you breathe in for five counts and you just continue that box cycle. When you continue that, you could do that for a minute, two minutes. Even just focusing on the counting of one to five will, ho- will, will focus your mind and take your mind off the thoughts that are in your head, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, there's a, a myriad of, of those sort of techniques that you can do throughout the day. So, I mean, to get someone started, you know, it might only take five minutes in the mornings just to get you going. And then once you, you sort of get into that routine, then you'll um, you'll, you'll you'll notice the um, the effects it's actually having on you, which will then compound and say, okay, well, this, I'm onto something here, and you can keep going. So it doesn't have to be the hard work or you're sitting in a, a sort of zen space, if you know what I mean. Right. It's, but do you recommend sitting or lying or? Uh, it can be done anyway. I mix it up. Some day, some days I'll I'll sit. Some days I'll lie down. You know, if I'm lying down, I just put a Always put a bolster up underneath my back just to open up the chest. Oh yeah, it helps, and that's that's another thing. Like that's sort of coming back to the yoga. That that helps release the energy in your body once you you're pushing out. You, your heart's a bit higher than the rest of your body, so it helps the blood flow get around the body. You do it lying down, headphones in if you've got a an app. So I mean, the app I started on was Smiling Mind. They've got some really good things. That's free. It's a it's not like a thirty day trial. It's a, it's just cons- consistently free. It's an Australian based one too. Smiling really nine and sm- like the- nah, smiling mind is in your mind. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry. So you can look that up, Facebook, Instagram, and on the internet yeah. sort of thing. They've got it. They've got downloads. There's um, uh, there's a couple more that I've got on the um Instagram page. If you sort of go on there and click on some of the profiles that we've had up so far, there's there's recommendations from from the people that we've profiled on this Instagram page that you know people that they've have inspired them or apps that they've used over the t- over the years to, yeah. to help them. But that smiling mind one is is perfect because it's got meditations from like two to three minutes. Some of them can be a little bit out there, but at the end of the day, if you you can start on some you know, some of those smaller breathing techniques, that that'll get you up and yeah. up and running. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. and even if you just did that, if that was all you did, you know, you'd still get the benefits out of it. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I might look into that. I mean, I know I've used um, Headspace before, and I thought that was quite yeah. good. I really yep. enjoyed that one, but then it, I don't think I ever went for the paid version. <laughs> I don't know. I was being a cheapskate. But, yeah, um, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing you. Yeah. Um, which is ridiculous because, I mean, like you say, you'd be, you're willing to spend money on a coffee in the morning, but not, not on something that can actually really help you set yourself up for a productive day, but whatever. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, I mean, look, I mean, obviously this is a topic that could go on for, for days and days and days, and I don't really want to overcomplicate the the um the simplicity of what we're talking about here at the end of the day, like for guys to get started, it really is a matter of spending five minutes a day just just sitting down and just taking that time to yourself and you maybe use an app or maybe go and 
you know, something that can help guide you. I found that was helpful for me because by having, I mean, I admit that it's probably not a long-term solution when it comes to meditation, like having someone always talking into your ear, but I found for me it did help mm. to give myself learn a few of the techniques then you could get started with it and then you, if you want to go and do it on your own or you don't have your phone with you one day or whatever, you don't feel like, oh, I can't meditate because I haven't got my phone with me. Yeah. Um, so I think part of it is as well detaching from a lot of that stuff. <laughs> like to... right, exactly. I so, say, yeah, hey, I mean, relying on your phone for the app to meditate can be a bit of a distraction at the end of the day because you, you'll be sitting there and messages will come in or emails will come in. So yeah. I mean, it's a good start, but it, it's, it's one of those things that you sort of want to step away from that eventually. But yeah, it's, it's an ideal way to start. I found a lot of the, a lot of the um, techniques they ran through were things that, I mean, you, you, they teach you as you go even mm. subconsciously, you know, so it's a lot of, like you were saying before, breathing techniques and things like that, which you can learn through the app and you can take and apply elsewhere. Do, and, and in terms of places to meditate, do you typically meditate at home or would you go, would you do it while you're, while you're you know, in a park or somewhere or down at the beach or, you know, on the base of a Himalayan mountain? Like where? <laughs> <laughs> uh, generally, it's on the top of my own Himalayan mountain. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, nah, look, I, it's generally done at home. Don't? It's first thing in the morning. Then again, if I need it in the afternoon or whenever during the day, but the bulk of the time it's at home. Somewhere where I'm not going to get distracted, like sitting in public parks, sort of, it's not, it's not really my thing. Yeah. You know, there's distractions and I sort of get that feeling of, you know, people looking at me, what's that like over there doing in the corner, you know, strange fella. But um, yeah, then if I'm you know, moving from job to job or situation to situation, Take a minute, sit in the car, breathe it out. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. Not while I'm driving. <laughs> Although there are there are there are a couple of things you can do <clears throat> while you are driving. There's a couple of things that um, a couple of other techniques, and I'll I'll try and put them together for you in a in a bit of a video you might be able to share with the boys. Okay. So you can do while you're driving, and um, certainly know a couple of fellas that do that. Yeah. Spend a lot of time like in driving from job to job, but they don't have the radio on. They're actually sort of focused on their breathing. So Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, it's something that you can just sort of just splice into small sections of your life. Nice. Yeah. All right, mate. Well, look, I think that pretty much wraps it up, unless there's anything else you wanted to wanted to add. I mean, I, I appreciate that this is a huge topic and there's very, very different, yeah. lots of different uh, avenues we can go down, but I think just, I think we've done a pretty good job of bringing some clarity to what meditation is and how it can apply to a busy person's life. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Now, I know we're going to, as I said before, I did throw a poll out in our group to ask who'd be interested in meditation and um, much to my surprise, the majority came back and said they would be. So, guys, yeah. we are going to run a live meditation in the Facebook community and if you're not in that group, go over there and, and join in. So, you just search The Site Shed on uh, Facebook and it's the group. There's a page and a group. Uh, if you like the page, you'll be sent to the group anyway. So, Go and check that out um, and we'll be running that probably, well, this podcast will be coming out uh, in a couple of months by which time we'll probably try and coincide the uh, meditation to, to, to time with it. So, yeah, that'd be good. And if you have any questions, uh, you can get hold of Luke through um, the Instagram page, which is uh, the handle is at 100 underscore meditators. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And the emails there, 100 meditators at gmail.com. Um, so, uh, Luke, thank you for your time. Cheers, Pat. I'm going to go and um, go and harness my chief for five minutes. That's it, mate. And then get into the day. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Thanks okay. for having me, man. It's just, that was awesome. Cheers. Beautiful. All right. Well, listeners, um, if you want any, infinite, any more information there, uh, by all means, or if you've got any comments, you can... Um, leave those comments wherever you see this pop across your social media. Um, if you want me to get Luke back to answer questions, then I can certainly do that. Um, otherwise, uh, get out there and um, good luck with your focus. Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, you'll get sent a weekly notification which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. 
If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, That would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, Likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.